So tonight we're gonna focus on the building blocks that it takes to um, overcoming any 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 hurdles you're having and you're trading. Um, kind of the basis points to start to turn this into something that's very profitable, uh, become maybe even a full time trader. So we'll look at some couple of fundamentals or you know just uh, basic steps that uh, keep you guys on the right side of the trade or help you guys make decisions uh, during your trading. So before before you guys hopped on, I was taking a look at um some of the trades I sent out the other day. So we'll, um, give me one moment here. We'll kind of look over this uh, CHF, this Frank JPY. So we had a classic uh, head and shoulders here. You got the left shoulder, the right shoulder, and you have the uh, Excuse me, you have the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder. Let's see something here. So the market does make series of uh, repetitive patterns. If you're familiar with them, um, very powerful tool to kind of identify what could potentially be happening in the market. So this is classic head and shoulders. What we'll see on this chart here. It's going to head and shoulders. And that's going to signal a drop in the market. So how we like to play it is we like to usually look at what we call a neckline break. So the neckline would have been somewhere around here. Just wanna see it break the neck of this red line. So we got the neckline break here. And that's gonna be our signal to take the trade short. Somewhere around here. Came back and retested, and then we got a nice drop for what was this? Right about 60 pips. So two ways you could have played this trade. There's one you could have waited for the break, or you could have entered right upon the break. So as soon as it broke, could have got in, got your entry somewhere around here, and rolled this thing down. Or you could have waited for the pullback or the retest of that zone and continued to ride it down. So it gave us a nice trade yesterday, about, right about 60 pips. At this point, we're gonna see if this is gonna continue or if it's gonna pull back, giving us an additional potential entry. So from this point on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the position we have in the market. And um, I'm not sure what I wanna do yet. So this is where your critical thinking skills come into play. It depends on what you have in your account, um, what are your goals. The beginning of the week just started, so you know we, we like to start looking at trading as not just a a trade-by-trade trade basis or even maybe a day-by-day -day basis. We want to kind of stack up what we can get for the, the week. And what we'll do is we'll, um, you know, personally what I'm going to do is probably just let this run. I don't, I don't mind it coming back and um, retracing or, you know, say I'm at $30 in profit, I don't mind it coming back to $10 in profit because all I'm going to do is place in another entry. So, you know, rule of thumb, we always start, we never start with the full amount that we're going to use. If we're going to use a 0 0.5 in the market, we want to break that off into what we call segment, segmenting the trades. So we may have a 0.2 here when it first started, come back, we'll put another 0.2. When we see it dropping, we may even throw in another another um, penny lot. We're just going to try to ride this thing down with full size. The market never moves in, you know, straight waves or straight up and down. 
So instead of just looking for that down move, I'm anticipating that the market's going to pull back and I'm reacting to that. Uh, so that's, that's very key. That's going to be trade management. You never, you know, throw all your, your eggs in one basket because the market at the end of the day can do what it wants to do. It could pull down, come up, and overextend a bit. Doesn't mean that this isn't still going down, but it could come up. And instead of stopping at this, this zone, it could do a little poke out. It could poke out a little bit more, come up here, test this area, and then give us a nice drop. So we don't we don't look at that as a bad thing because we're going to have the stop losses uh, appropriated in a way where it shouldn't hit the stop. And if we get a move up here, this is just a better entry. You're getting a better price, a more expensive price to sell it. So we'll put in our second entry somewhere up here. So now, you know, maybe this one is in drawdown, but as soon as it starts dropping, we're going to reap the reward. It's going to come quicker than this one will be in profit. And we'll ride that on down. We may even enter in a third trade. So that's just some of the mindset of some of the ways that I, I would want to attack the market. Uh, here we see we had EJ. Uh, we projected for it to pull up a little bit more and fall. But what EJ did was started this started this drop. So we've been monitoring EJ for a while. Um, it's kind of been went against us a few times, but we're thinking that this is going to be the moment that we get this break. Um, so we can start to see the potential for the same pattern. Uh, the market does kind of the same thing. So you get to the point to where you're, you start recognizing these, these shapes. And that's basically how we get paid to do is to kind of draw and uh, kind of do puzzles all day. So I know that, you know, it got that shape. It could come back up. Then give me my head and shoulders. So if it does play out and, and performs that pattern, just gonna be looking for another neckline break. You guys see, I'm already kind of anticipating that. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Oh uh, yes. Oh uh, yes, ma'am. I got you. All right. <laughs> oh well, okay. I'm sorry. That's uh, recording. I was wondering why. I'm gonna start letting people. There you go. Excuse me, I thought somebody was talking to me. That's a recording from the other day. So we'll we'll wait to see how this kind of moves. Um, it, it, it'd be good. I, I would like to see it go ahead and break. Typically, when you have this resistance zone here, um, when you have this little area that you can identify, it takes a big candle, pretty big size candle to break it. So I know I do got, got some newer people on the line, so we'll, we'll back up now. We see these different shapes. We see the candles. Uh, we see the where it was kind of a ceiling, and then it's also a floor. So some of these terms may be foreign for some, but we're going to get you guys caught up to speed. Um, in the group, I'll repost it. There's a book called the um, Candlestick Bible. And let's do that. We're going to pull up the Candlestick Bible because this is going to be like our roadmap. Roadmap to success, as well as the uh, the ebook. So I'm not sure if you're familiar, but you guys, you got access to a lot of different information here in both of the groups, either the Patreon or the the uh, public group. You can click under files. It's gonna have a lot of different ebooks, um, some indicators, just different different things for you guys as use. You scroll through here, and there's one right here called the Candlestick Bible. It's going to be a great read. You guys, go through there. It's going to explain what all these candles mean. It's a pretty quick read. It's going to explain open, high, low, close. So it's good we're here because I did want to cover this on the chart. All right, today, so when we look at a candle, we always want to look notice notice the open, high, low, close. This is going to give us information throughout any time form, in any chart. That gives me an extra six. One moment, let me come in. Get my arm all dirty and kind of put my, wrap that around my. 
So open, high, low, close. Uh, is anybody familiar with this before I go in there? Uh, one, if you're familiar with it, two, if you're not. You can drop it in the chat. Somebody drop a one if they're familiar with open, high, low, close, a two if they're not. No, no problem. So a lot of people um, ignore this, but this is going to be one of the, as you know, this is one of the first things that they put out in this book. It shows you a lot of vital information. So this first candle we have here, this is going to be considered the, the real, the body of the candle, or we also call it the spread of the candle. Y'all hear me refer to it as a spread. This is just a measurement of of the differences in price that that candle move when we look at what we call Japanese candlesticks. So when you're looking at a candlestick, you're gonna have a high, you're gonna have a close, you're gonna, or excuse me, you're gonna have a, a open, you'll have a low, you'll have a high and a close. And these little um, stick looking things are called wicks. They represent where price was, but couldn't close at that point. So the body, it's going to show you where everything stabilized or where the price actually closed at or the movement of the price. So you have price open down here at the bottom. This is where, you know, say the day started or that particular candle, say we're on an hour chart, we're on a 15 minute chart. It opened here, price came down and it created a low, but the bulls came in and pushed the price back up. It went all the way up here to this high. Then you have the birds that say, okay, that's enough, enough, enough uh, buying. Let's, let's sell into this. So they sold and they were able to push the price back down here to this close. So where one candle closes, you can see we move to the right. The next one's going to open. So we had the open here. Price probably pushed up. It created a high. The birds came back in again and said, we don't like this price area. This is telling us some, start telling us some information because we noticed both times when it came up here, Bears stepped in or the market didn't like this price range. So it pushed down. It pushed all the way down to this point. This point, the same thing. The bear, the bulls came in and say, hey, that's too, that's enough. That's too, too inexpensive. That's too cheap. So they pushed it back up and it closed down here at this low. So there's, there's some good information of how candles formed, how we switch over. So your next candle, your your, pre your previous candle's close is gonna be your next close. It's gonna open at that exact level. The reason this information is important because once you start looking at a new day, the market, you know, there's, there's four different, uh, well, there's more than four, but Forex is traded around the world by different banks. So every time a different bank opened, there are some different actions that happen or, you know, they have a different itinerary or they're trying to achieve different things. So once we start knowing that, we'll see days. There's a, there's a time in the, in the, the market where the market closes and then it'll open up for a new day. So when we put on these session breaks, so when we look at a session break, you see these lines I have on the screen, and I'll show you guys how to how to actually add those. This represents a full day's worth of data, so we can see how far the market moved in that day. Each one of these candles represent an hour worth of uh, you know time, or how far the the market moved you know in that hour. In between these lines, it's 24 hours where all the market moved in that 24 hour span. So we notice that we're on an hour interval or time frame. Each candle represents an hour. Each of these, these sections equal 24 hours. Or, or we can look at it as a day, a full day. So now we're on a daily chart, and each one of these candles now represent a full day of price action. So when we, when we, when we think back about open, high, low, close, generally we can see that the market opened on Monday. It moved. It, it made what we seen in that um, that diagram. So, price opened here. Probably pushed up a little bit. 
got pulled back down, couldn't close here, opened back up. So price opened back up right around this area. Take a best strike. So let me zoom this, blow this up a little bit more. So the next candle opened up here. Now this is where it gets a little extract uh, abstract. So we're gonna continue to, you know, add on to this, and we'll, we'll speak about this. But we see that this is the day breaker right there. So the market closed from New York at four o'clock. It opened back up at five o'clock, and we get the continued push from yesterday. So I can look at a open high, low close, and I see this count, and I say, hey, it looks like the bears took control, but the bulls came in a little bit. This opened, and I can start trying to make a decision on how much momentum is to the downside. I start paying attention more to these wicks because they're going to tell me something. Like, I can look at, let's say I got in a trade up here. And I, I let price come all the way down here. This is about 20, 30 pips. And I see this move. It came up. So now I'm thinking, you know, none of this is going to be here. Let's erase this to make it. I'm going to erase this here. So we were able to get in this trade somewhere up here. Are we, excuse me, we had it up here. I'm looking at the market now. It, it moved too fast for me to catch it. But. <laughs> so we, we seen price come up and we're trying to make a decision like, should I get out, should I get in? We started looking at these wicks to see that the bulls came back in at this area. So when I see these swings, sometimes I want to mark that off because they generally represent something in the past or in the future. So now I'm kind of making myself a roadmap. So if price ever gets back here, I can expect that from looking at these open high low closes or the wicks that somebody, some type of Bear may be up here. So the way that we, we trade is we're going to be starting at current time. We're going to look to the past, look to the left, and that'll help us see what's going to happen in the future. So if I know that I needed to mark this area, I seen that price came down, it, it retraced, but it couldn't break this area here. I see all these wicks. And then I see the price open and started coming down. Well, it pushed up and it tried it again and then it, it got rejected and it started coming down. I'm, I'm, I wanna keep that in, in mind as I'm starting to get ready to trade. Or it may be, you know, maybe a, a, a few days later, it comes back to this area. These are prime places in the market where you wanna facilitate trade. So just because I see the market's moving, I don't want to just get in the trade just because it's moving. Like even, even with this pullback, I wouldn't want to get in here. I want to wait till price is at a level that I'm familiar with. One moment. So if I'm seeing, so I'm plotting out areas to where I personally would want to trade it. So that's the end of the market. So now I got this, this identified. And I can look down here and I can see price is doing that same type of thing. It has a, those wicks, has these zones. So I know here is where I want to make a decision. What decision do I want to make? Do I want to go long or do I want to go short? But I do now have an area where I want to take the trade. I don't want to take it over here. I don't want to take it in all this. I want to take it at defined areas. So 
So we're in an area where I want to take a trade. We identified that. Let's go back real quick and we see how we identified that. So we we seen the pullback. We kind of noticed the open high, low close, or we noticed we started taking a little bit more look into what the candles do. And now I have areas where I feel comfortable taking a trade. I know that if price breaks here, it's probably going to shoot up. If price breaks here, it's probably going to shoot down. So now I just need a reason to get into the market. As far as why would I get into this market, that's going to go back to this candlestick Bible. We're going to start looking for some of these patterns. Look, this is a reason here. You see price came up. So this will be like price coming back up to this, to this line here. And then it gave me this type of candle. This tells me to sell. And there's a prime example right there. So I had this marked off, but we could have found this area. And we can say price. Let me remove this so it'll make it clear. So So we're in this consolidation, we see price coming up and we're like, we, we see that it's bullish or we see that right now the price is kind of, it's really trapped in this area, but we can see that bulls are starting to make a run up. I want to try to decide where, where could bulls possibly stop it. So if I'm right here in the market, I would want to look to my left and I can see right above, I have an area where they did this again, they did what we just went over with the open high, low close. Now this is multiple candles because it's an hour, but if I was to put this on a daily chart, it'll look something similar to this. You had that first candle where price, you know, open here, close here, this next one open here and push down and close there. So this is what we see building here. So generally you can't really tell if these areas are going to hold in or where these areas will be if you don't look to the left. So we look to the left and we can see that, you know, every time it gets here, it wants to stop. Every time it gets here, it wants to stop. Every time it gets here, it wants to stop. So that'll be kind of one check mark that I can put, put down that, hey, this area, there's more probability for price to come down. Then we get into what we call confluences. So you never want to take the trade based on just that alone. You want to have, you know, two or three different things that say, okay, I can take this trade. That information is going to come from having your trading plan. So I want to point about how do I get in? I want to use support and resistance. That's that's the point that I'm at now. I got a check right there. That's a check. Okay, some of these other things are a little bit more advanced, but I have things like volume. I want to look for a price action pattern. I want to check an indicator. That'll probably be the go-to now for everybody to look at these indicators or correlating pairs. So to do that, let me put on an indicator. I like to use, we can use like any indicator, the Moku the Moku Cloud, but I, I prefer the Bollinger Band. So when we look at the Bollinger Band, we can see that it's almost to the outer band. Let me remove this, uh, get all this drawing off the chart real quick. So we can see it's almost to the outer band here. So that's another sign. So that's, that's two check marks to sell. I'm already starting to see that this is starting to come down. I consider that another check mark. Let's see what else we got. So I want to enter on a pullback or volume spike. I don't want to chase the trade. So if I'm looking to go short, go, go to the downside, I would like to see price coming up. I don't want to sell just because I see it going down. Like I see it pushing down there. I don't want to sell. Then I want to wait for price to come back up. 
come back to a, a, a spot that I'm familiar with. Um, a way that we can look look at this is like you want to have something behind you, like you want to lean against the wall. You want to have something behind you to give you support. So I, I have this area here. So that's three reasons that I can take this trade. So I'm going to say, uh, just for sake of speeding up the example, um, that I, I want to take this trade. It's starting to look good. So I enter. I find a spot that okay, I'm going to enter here. Now I want to give me a stop loss. Now if price has been contained in this area where these lines are. I want to give me a little bit of room behind it. And we'll say that's my stop loss. And I want to see how far I want to take the trade. So I want to at least get, I think it's going to, I think it's going to break this previous area. I know for sure I can get down to here. But I'm a little bit more adventurous. I say I think I want to try to let it just run it down here. So one of the most important steps now that I got my trade, I'm done with saying okay, I got my trade. I want to still follow my plan. How much do I risk? Now I'm asking myself that question: How much do I put on this trade? We were just talking about when I first started the call of uh, you want to just kind of throw the throw the the bait out there. You don't want to put everything out there, you want to just throw, put something on your hook. So I'm going to put a small lot in, and we're going to let this thing ride. So um, I got the small lot that I want to use. Now I want to measure off how far does this trade really make sense. This is a one big thing. When I first started trading, it took me a few years to, to realize this. Like, yeah, it looks good, but does this trade really make money? Um, so to understand that, I want to measure it off. I want to see, okay, from, from where I'm at to where I'm trying to go, that's 62 pips, 65. If I'm wrong, that's 40 pips. So that's about a one to a one and a half. I prefer to have for every dollar, I want $3. So personally, I wouldn't take this trade, but it's still, it's still winning more than you lost. So you can take these trades. The more opportunity you have to win than what you lost, if you have like those three to ones, it makes it easier. So if the market does something weird, you know that you only need to win a few trades to, to have a good week. So you don't have to win them all. You just got to start getting in the market and, and, and um, measure these off right. So that's a one to one and a half. And I say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and still take that. Cause let's just say this is a high probability trade, which is not, but generally let's say we, we, we see something that every time we see it, it works in that direction. So we're like, okay, I want to take this trade. So we take it still good risk to reward and we just let it run. So it came against us a little bit. No, no worries. We're going to keep holding it. Now it's starting to break down a bit. Now we're in profit, still in profit. Okay, and it didn't get down to our level, but it broke a little bit lower. So we got some profit. We got about 30 pips in profit. So we know it's going to be hard for this to move through this decision time. This is trade management. What do I want to do? I can go in and take my 30 pips or I can take my stop loss, bring it down to where I got in it. Now this is risk free. Whatever happens, it's not going to damage your account. You only got positive here. The worst thing that can happen is that they come back and hit your, your, your stop loss for break even. So currently, if we took this trade, we're just going to hold it. We got nice momentum down. There, You see there's no real wicks yet. There's starting to be big candles brewing. So this trade is going to be shaping up and looking good. But I, I just want to show a live example of kind of, you know, putting all those things kind of together how you can uh, facilitate a, a trade. 
does does everybody everybody following along? Any, any questions? Um, it doesn't have to be just pertaining to this, but we'll just take a little break here and see if everybody has any anybody has any questions, anything they they were seeing in the market. You know, somebody has me, son, don't be shy, man. I know y'all, everybody good, okay, good, that's good. It's good, anybody, ain't no, no such thing as, it may clarify something for somebody else. So. so if anything come to mind, feel free to drop it in the chat, I'll monitor the chat. So really, we this area here is kind of consolidation. We really wouldn't want to trade this, but I was just giving a live example. We would want to wait for it to break here, and I'll show y'all why. So we can see this area has been heavily supported. Every time it comes here, it bounces, it bounces. You know, it came through a little bit here, but it bounces. So the market is, it, I say it's kind of like a comic strip or a newspaper tells us a story. So we look throughout the charts, we're gonna start identifying and learning how to read this story that the market's telling us. So it's saying every time I come here, somebody's stepping in we're not going to be just looking at this as like candles. We want to start identifying and kind of giving it a persona. Like, okay, we came here, some bull or somebody came in here and they liked it this price, they shot it up. They're still liking this price, they shot it up. They're liking this price, they shot it up though. So that tells me that somebody's here, so it's going to take a lot of momentum to push through this. So now we have what we call a range. You guys notice the price is just going to the top of the range, dropping to the top of the range, dropping. So if something does happen where it doesn't doesn't break here, we can figure that price is probably going to come right back up here. It's going to do one or two things. It's going to either break it or it's going to drop. So if I miss the trade down here at the bottom. Now that I identify where price has been, been working at, I don't even want to pay attention to none of this. I want to just get the easiest trade. I want to look at something up here or something down here. So if, if I miss this and I'm not at the chart and say price is here, well, I already have a range. So I know I don't want to just try to, it may look good on the setup. It may get a pullback and you got a nice wick and, you know, I, I'm not going to take that trade. I want to let price get up here where I'm comfortable. I want to let the price come to me. And then I'll make a decision. Do I want to short it? Do I want to buy it? How do I make that decision? I'm going to look through these candlestick patterns. And there's different reasons why I want to make that. Give me, give me one moment, y'all. I got somebody at my door. One second.
right, apologies. Sorry about that. So we look through this book and see different things. It's going to give us, you know, understanding to how we can get into this trade. So I think we covered a, a, a little bit of, of, you know, we didn't go into too much detail, but we and we will call this execution. So we put most of these pieces together to actually take a trade. And um, what we'll do throughout the rest of the week, we're, we're going to, we'll start going, we're going over, um, we're breaking it down in the different segments. So tomorrow is going to be um, strategies. As far as like adding on those indicators, let me see like it's oversold here. Pull up the crosshairs. Kind of give you some extra advantage to where price could go. We see that this is starting to flip over, so that would have told us to sell. So tomorrow we're going over strategies. Uh, we kind of just looked at some things that we use to trade in the market, but uh, it, it gets a lot simpler. You'll start having this like a routine or like the back of your hand, especially when you develop a trading plan. So I think that that's something we'll do. We'll do that on Wednesday. Let's let's we'll, we'll everybody that comes on Wednesday, I personally help you set up a trading plan. We'll identify some things that you already know, and we'll, we'll just map out something for, for each person that's on that call. Uh, but for the rest, we got a few more minutes. We got on kind of late, so we'll look at some trades that I'm, I'm looking at and see if there's anything we can take. EJ looks like it's just setting up pretty good. So we want to wait for a pullback. It's almost to my level once it breaks here. I want to, I definitely want to be a bear. Let me turn off some of these jazz real quick. So we had it in a nice channel. Everything is kind of lining up good. I just stopped here, but we can see this uptrend movement, the things that they talk about in this book. We identified that on the chart. Then we got a break of that, and we're starting to get this consolidation or we, that range that we just seen. Uh, we also have, and, and I was trying to see about the head and shoulders pattern. It looks like it's already been kind of created. So we got a shoulder here. We got the head here. And we have a right shoulder, possible right shoulder here. So now we're just gonna be looking for price to break the neck. We're trying to break the neck of the price. So identifying the net is this going to be where price been bouncing it? So generally, generally we're going to get a breakdown. We'll get a retest because we know price doesn't just go straight down and likes to retest these areas, and then we'll get our move. So we're looking for price to break 12540, come down about 125, maybe 80. And then we'll look for it to reject, push back up, which makes sense. If we start to the right and look to the left, we can see where there's kind of re rejection areas here. So we'll look for it to pull down, pull back. That'll be our entry. We'll ride this down. Kind of breaking that Bollinger band. We we'll use a higher time frame to see a couple of things. Use a smaller time frame. So that's one highlight too. If you notice, I'm not for some of my more advanced traders. I'm not looking at just one. I'm not stuck on one time frame. Each one of these time frames is going to give you a different perspective. It'll give you a, a, another outlook of what could happen.
So just looking at the daily alone, I see a lot of room for this thing to drop. If I was to just be looking at the one hour, it doesn't look like it has that much more room to drop. When I look at the daily, I know that there's a lot of room if this thing gets to moving, that it's gonna start moving. So this is part of your top-down analysis. You wanna learn how to work through these time frames. Last bit of information I say is that um, the markets are what we call fractal. So everything that happens on a 15 minute chart works its way up all the way up the time frame from the 15 and eventually go all the way up to the daily, daily to the weekly. So you start noticing that there's a lot of patterns. I had an example, I showed somebody this the other day. So that, that head and shoulders that we're starting to form, we can find it on the 15 minute chart. They'll go to the right shoulder. Well, all this here is probably gonna be the right shoulder. There's the head, and then here's this other shoulder. There's a lot more candles that came into play, but this structure, let's try to mark it off. From here to here, is creating all that. So what happens on the 15 eventually works its way up to the hour. There's four 15 minute candles in an hour. And the more we dive in, the more we make sense, but just remember that four 15 in an hour, start thinking about it like that. There's, you know, four, four hours in a four hour candle, there's 24 hour candles in the daily. There's six four hour candles in a daily that'll make one of these candles. So just using the previous, let's see how it's a smaller window of data. The hour is a lot more data. 15 minutes, it's tons of more data. Yet, they're basically creating the same pattern on a wider, you know, set. A, a wider area of data or a wider area of space. So there's your left shoulder again, there's your head, there's your right shoulder. But you guys always know why I say use these higher time frames because you see how chaotic that looks. Even though it's a head and shoulders, we can see that now, it did all of this, it spiked up, it did all of this just to get to the point to where it's gonna drop. We look at the hour, it's a lot smoother. Still had those spikes, but it doesn't look as extreme. So we use the, the higher time frames to map out, and then we use these to give us our entry. So yeah, I, th I think that's cool. If you don't have no questions, man, we'll stop there for the day. And then tomorrow is gonna be more of execution or more of um, strategies to actually get in the trade. Before we close out, though, is there any questions on anything we kind of looked at today? Just want to make sure I ask that make everybody good, everybody kind of comprehending to the most of what we're going over, some of what we're going, because it's not going to be a one-time, one-and-done. It's going to be like a puzzle. I always say is you, we build in the corners, and then we'll get that middle to complete the puzzle or, or you know, kind of get you guys a – canvas or a picture of okay this is how this is how your picture start looking it start looking like a trading plan we trade off of this okay we see this 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 take the trade well as always i hope i provided you with some type of value i hope y'all learned something off of this call um we'll do it again tomorrow about 7 30 but um, y'all, y'all stay safe in the markets. Y'all, y'all be blessed, and I appreciate your time.